This is Bishop George Murray. On behalf of your Catholic friends and neighbors in the Diocese of Youngstown, I invite you to join us for this celebration of the Holy Mass. Good morning and welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass. Today is the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant is Father Jim Corda, president of CTNY, the Catholic Television Network of Youngstown. I'm Barb Zorn from St. Columba Cathedral and Holy Family Parish in Poland. As we pray this Mass, let us remember in our prayers Vincent Spinella. As we gather at your table, as we listen to your word, help us know, O oh God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story till we claim it as our own. Teach us through this holy banquet how to make love's victory known. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. It's good to be with you today as we gather to celebrate God's word, sacrament, and also his presence within us. So together let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us this day with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us join the angels in their hymn of praise. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth, earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble. And none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days Judah shall be saved, Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord 
our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord Lord is my my shepherd, shepherd, there there is nothing nothing I I shall want. want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The The Lord Lord is my my shepherd, shepherd. there There is is nothing nothing I I shall want. want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The The Lord Lord is my shepherd, shepherd. there There is is nothing nothing I I shall want. want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord Lord is is my my shepherd, shepherd. there There is is nothing nothing I I shall want. want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The The Lord Lord is my shepherd, shepherd. there There is is nothing nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. He who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know the man they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest for a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, Today's gospel tells of a time when Jesus planned a vacation for himself and his disciples. Let's face it, they all needed it. Their lives had been absolutely consumed with their work. The more people they helped, the more people there were needing help. St. Mark says people were coming and going in such great numbers, making it impossible for them to so much as even eat. No one can endure that kind of pressure for too long. So Jesus decided that they all needed to get away and just to rest for a while. Now the details are really not given, but no doubt there was some planning involved in anticipation of their brief and well-deserved holiday. As they made the necessary provisions and headed quietly across the Sea of Galilee, Their thoughts were focused on the events of recent days. 
Things had been happening so fast that there was barely any time for them to sort them out or even to talk about them or discuss them. Now they were going to have that opportunity, and it was almost too good to be true. That was how they had it planned, but that was not how it turned out. As they drew near to the land, they began to see what looked like a crowd of moving people. And as they got closer, there was no mistaking those familiar sights and sounds and faces. Their expected solitude was buried in a wave of needy people reaching out for help. Now on some level, that experience comes to each of us. We plan one thing and end up with another. Life at times seems to take delight in disrupting our plans. You know, sometimes it's simple like rain on the day of a picnic. At other times, it's far more serious and even earth and world shattering. You made plans for a secure financial future, but you didn't count on losing your job. You had plans for a happy marriage and a good home, but your spouse had other plans and walked out on you. You had planned for your children to go to college, but when the time came, instead they chose to just go to work. For yourself, you planned a long, healthy life, but the medical diagnosis tells you that such is not the case. You see, these are the realities of everyday life. The critical question becomes, how do we react when our plans don't work out? Well, there's a good chance that most of us would respond with resentment. We are inclined to react negatively whenever something we want is denied us or something we do not want is forced on us. In our minds, if not on our lips, is the oft-related and repeated question, why me, Lord? What did I ever do to deserve this? In this life, we had better learn to expect the unexpected. We want one thing and we get another. That's really part of everyday living. Now, Jesus could have been resentful when it happened to him, but he didn't, and neither should we. I think another thing we can do is to passively resign ourselves to the inevitable. I remember hearing about a neighborhood scripture study group, and each member was to mention their all-time favorite Bible verse. Well, one quoted John 3:16, God so loved the world. Another mentioned Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Another mentioned the golden rule, do unto others. And finally, one woman said that her favorite verse from the Bible is the one that says, grin and bear it. Well, obviously, she didn't know much about the Bible, but she did know a lot about life. To every one of us comes those times when Everything depends on our ability to just endure. Our willingness to hang on, to keep going when we are tempted to give up. But surely there must be a better way, an easier way to react to all this. Well, Jesus shows us the way. When his plans did not work out and he did not become resentful, He simply did not just endure the disappointment, but he used it. He turned adversity to his advantage. The scripture says that he pitied them and he began to teach them many things. That sure that day became a classroom and the people left there with a few seeds of eternal truth planted in their minds and hearts. Now, when the Pharisees questioned Jesus' morals, he did not become someone who resented it or who merely endured it. He used it for the backdrop of one of his best-known stories, the prodigal son. 
and even when they nailed him to a cross. And he not only endured it, but he used it. He turned that ugly instrument of death into the most powerful influence of good that the world has ever seen. So the question is, how do we respond when our plans don't work out? Well, as I see it, we have three options. We can become bitter and resentful. We can accept and endure, or we can take that disappointment and use it to accomplish something good in our world and in ourselves. So which will it be? May God give each of us the faith and the courage to make the right choice. Together now, let us profess the faith that we all share. I believe, I believe in, in one God, God the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will, he will come, come again, again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Humbly now let us present to God our special petitions. For Pope Francis and all church leaders who shepherd their flock and take care that none are lost, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all civic leaders, that they may bring the best attributes of a shepherd to their roles, caring for the people entrusted to their leadership and guiding them along the right paths. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For an end to gun violence in our community and around the world, that people may turn to nonviolent options and respect human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who feel like sheep without a shepherd, that they may feel the compassion of Christ and be drawn back into the fold, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all of us gathered here today, as we work to build up the body of Christ in our community, our nation, and our world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God in heaven, continue to guide and direct us in your way and give us faith and courage to deal with all of life's issues and one day welcome us to the fullness of your peace in heaven. We make this prayer in the spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, the sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world. You have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin 
and save from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and may those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Lord Christ, the people flock to you like sheep without a guide. And you, with words that glowed with grace, the truth of God supplied. And when the evening sun had set upon those hungry folk, you fed them in the desert place with bread you blessed and broke. Today, O oh Christ, we come to you with hungers unfulfilled. 